Hey, welcome everybody back to Maelstrom Radio. I'm not sure what to call this video, little video series that we're doing here, but uh, my name is Peter, uh, one of the hosts here at Maelstrom Radio, and I want to talk a little bit more again about Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft. Mostly, I think I want to talk about to this time uh, being a 17 year long WoW veteran and an eight year long Final Fantasy XIV veteran, talking a little bit about as a f f WoW player, should you try? Final Fantasy 14 or, you know, reasons why you should play or reasons why you might like to play it. And if you've been questioning, uh, would this be fun for me to play? I'm going to first start off and say, if you have been lacking or missing that RPG part of your MMO, Final Fantasy 14 is going to be for you right off the rip. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, a narrative story. It has one, <laughs> uh, and if that's for you, if that's up your jam, you know, if that's your jam, it's it's going to be good for you. Uh, there's hours, I would say maybe hundreds of, uh, I don't want to say hundreds of hundreds of hours, but they're like maybe a hundred hours worth of narrative content um, between the beginning of the game to the very end of it. And I think that if you're a person that likes storytelling uh, where your your character is treated as an adventurer for most of it, and not so much as the uh, tool. <laughs> uh, this game might be for you. You are you are very much not the uh, you know you're not the champion of Azeroth. You're more of the you're a warrior of light, and there are multiple warriors of light. Like you know there are other others in the world, and they acknowledge that in a lore way, <laughs> and it's pretty neat. To know that you're not the only one. You're, I mean, you're only one in aspects of the story they're telling, but they they acknowledge that you're not the only one. Um, and that's kind of cool. Uh, and the storyline is deep, and the voice acting is great, and the cutscenes in game are amazing, and the non non cutscenes, like like emo using cutscenes, are pretty good. They have done amazing work. So that's that. I'm going to leave that one there. If it's for you, cool. Like that, that's usually the barrier for entry to a lot of people. Like I don't want store. Like it, it, the game's not going to hold the same amount of weight for you. It's probably not for you. Dungeons. There are so many dungeons in Final Fantasy 14. There are a lot of dungeons in Final Fantasy 14. Plenty of dungeons to do. Plenty of dungeon content for you. They have a deep dungeon system, which is a roguelike dungeon. They have two sets of those, one, one that goes from 1 to 60, and one that goes from 61 to 70. And then that is it for that point. Uh, they didn't make one for uh, 81, to, I'm sorry, from 71 to 80. They have a different way of leveling, and you can also use that for leveling. I'll, I'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, but the dungeons are varied and vast, and they drop minions, and there's a lot of fun in them. There's different mechanics. Uh they're just they're just cool dungeons and they're very like they're spectacles and there's cool bosses and there's like sometimes there's voice acting and there's it, it's just they're they're truly truly very innovative and fun dungeons they span fantasy worlds to to battlefields to pirate dens to everything you could want in a fantasy setting they're there leveling options Boy, this is a big one to me anyway. I think that, yeah, you have the main storyline that you could level through and that will take you from one to 80. No problem. You will have no issues getting from one to 80 with through just the main story questing. You no, no issues whatsoever. You will get there. And it's paced very well, fairly well. Leveling options in terms of your other classes, AK jobs in Final Fantasy 14. Because you can play all those on one class. You don't need another tune. If I'm going to speak in some wild terms, you don't need another tune. Um, which is great. You can level everything on one per person. But you're like, now do I have to do side quests? Have to grind? You have to grind. You can just do. You can do the deep dungeon system, which is like I said, a roguelike, and that's from one to four people. So you can create a party, and your you and your friends can go level up other classes together. There are certain open world content you could do, and I will talk about open world content next, but certain open world content you could do to help level your character. I, and I think 
the deep dungeon system uh, system is a lot of fun. It's varied. The uh, they're both different. The one to sixty and the sixty one to seventy are both very very different. One you're going down into caverns that are what's the word I'm looking for? Un undead. I don't want to say they're undead, but undead, I guess. Uh, haunted, <laughs> maybe. And the other one is you're climbing the heavens, and they're they're like a Jenga tower sort of situation. Uh, it's truly interesting, and it's a great way to level. And it's it it just changes up just the grind of just doing quests and slamming dungeons. Is that option open? Absolutely. You get bonuses for doing certain things at certain times of the day. Sometimes even DPS get bonuses. That's a first for me. Uh, I've never seen it where it's like, you know, adventure or need DPS in this game. Amazing. Uh, but it can happen and, uh, you get bonus XP, you get bonus trinkets and, and tokens and all fun sorts of fun stuff. So, uh, open world content. There is no, uh, world quest in final fantasy 14. I, I just want to just let everybody know that now there's no world quest. You don't have to worry about doing world quests that they don't exist. What does exist are called fates, and they are sort of these open world, not, not world quests, but open world events that happen. And some of them are just plain, uh, simple f fight the thing, kill the thing, you're done. Some of them give you achievements. Uh, harder ones are harder to spawn. There's spawn conditions, uh, like throwing yourself off a cliff naked or dying under a, a full moon naked. <laughs> they have fun with it. Uh, so, and you can spawn different things. And sometimes those things drop minions and, and armor for your chocobo, which is a thing. Uh, by the way, your chocobo can also be used as a companion and help you out in the open world, which is pretty cool. It's also your mount and you can dress it up glam, you know, transmog for a, a mount. Who would have thought <laughs> it exists? Uh, and I'm using, again, I'm using final uh, World of Warcraft terminology, but their system is called Glamour, and yes, you can dress up your Chocobo. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's different, like, variations of armor and things like that for it. It doesn't do anything. It just looks cool. Raiding. There are ra there are raids in, in Final Fantasy XIV, and they aren't... I would say there's not as much raid content per patch cycle, because each one is four bosses uh, for the main rating series. And then there's the 24 man rating, which is uh, like an overarching story. That's closer to what you would get in World of Warcraft. Like it's a sprawling dungeon, but you get 24 people. And I would say that's almost more casual. Uh, day one that that drops, not so casual. They can't wall up. But I think once everybody learns the dance and everything like that, they're a little bit easier. And as people gear up, it definitely get easier. But at, when it first comes out, wallop. When it's later in the, in, the, in the patch cycle, not so much of a wallop. Normal rating has two tiers. Normal, savage. Savage is your harder difficulty. Normal is your normal. Uh, you can pug normals uh, and you'll be fine. You, you, you can go with friends if you feel comfortable doing that. Uh, savage, I would suggest a static group. Get get with a, a, a group of you and eight of uh, seven other of your friends is eight man content and uh, learn the dance. And the dance is sometimes very difficult, but very fun. Uh, and at the end of it, you will get a mount and titles and, and sometimes weapons and gear and you will look cool doing it. Uh, but if you really want to challenge the ultimate raids is where it's at. And those are a challenge. Those are a gauntlet. And I will say, in gauntlet, I mean gauntlet. 17, 20 minute long fights, knowing every step, knowing every part of the dance, surviving every boss. One person dies, it might be game over for everybody. They are tough. There's not a lot of them, but they're there. And the new one comes out in Endwalker, and I'm excited to see what that is. Uh, but right now they have uh, the ultimate Alexander and the ultimate uh, Binding Coil, so they have uh, they have some some fun hard hard content. Uh, but if you're a mythic raider, I don't think it's going to be for you. 
just gonna be honest. And if you're a Mythic Plus dungeon person, the dungeons don't have a Mythic system. Uh, so it's not gonna be for you either. I'm sorry. If that's just what your jam is, is just slamming dungeons and having those difficulties and pushing for those keys, that is not in this game. Stick with WoW. I'll just be honest. Just stick with WoW. That's that's gonna that that's gonna be your bread and butter. That's that's your jam. Um, I like again. This is more for the RP the people that are missing the RPG of the MMO RPG. Uh, crafting. If you're big big on crafting in World of Warcraft, or just you, do you feel that it's just like I, I do this just so I can have it leveled? I wish cra crafting in this game is its own thing. It's its own class. Uh, there's, there's a few different of them. Uh, it, they range from, uh, alchemist to carpenter to blacksmith to armor. Like, like you get a couple of different things. There's a lot of different options. There's three different gathering classes, um, botany, mining, and fishing. Um, and they supply the, the goods for the crafting classes. Normally crafters are also gatherers. Uh, and there's end game tools. I won't say weapons end game tools for them uh, because there's end game crafting <laughs> and uh, they started working on end game crafting content for and, and right now it's already ended. Uh, but in the expansion, I think they plan on doing it again. And so that crafters have things to do and and end game their own end game content. And if that interests you, Final Fantasy's got that locked wow doesn't even have that i i come on uh i mean that if you if you really want to be a crafter at heart like and that's what's cool about mmos too is like crafting things for people like that this game has you like just locked up and ready like it's a gift for you <laughs> uh housing uh that's a big thing you can buy a house this game and it's not instanced uh which has its own ups and downs uh but your fc could have its own fc house and that's cool and fcs are guilds and it'd be a guild house and you can have a whole guild house and that's kind of cool uh and that's just like some of the extra like little side stuff there's the gold saucer which is just full of mini games and you can buy mounts and special things there triple triad which is a card game from final fantasy 8 that's just a fun world game that you can go play around the world they have Oh, boy, uh, they, there's so much. There's so much to do. Uh, the treasure maps. Oh, that's fun. Uh, treasure maps are these special maps that gatherers can collect, and they let you go through this treasure dungeon. And everything is RNG based in there, and you can get a lot of money, like in-game currency, not special currency, like the actual like gold of Final Fantasy XIV is acquired in those dungeons. And if you get to the very end. The more and there's special things and cloths and crafting items you can get in there and minions and oh there's the, it's a lot of fun <laughs> the 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 map system is a lot of fun uh, the special uh, side quests the Hildebrand side quests are hilarious they they are truly some of the best and funniest writing I've ever seen in an MMO in a very long time uh, they're they're just fun to do. Um, and I think that's like that really just encompasses all this fun stuff in Final Fantasy XIV. If you're a WoW player and you think that interests you, go for it. Guess what? And this is not a sponsored video. I would have sat to say that at the beginning of this video because legal reasons. Uh, just letting you know that their free trial does include A Realm Reborn, which is the main base game, and Heaven's Word, the first expansion. So you can go from one to level 60. No holds bar. It's not a two week and you're done. It's you get both those things for free gratis to try. And if your barrier for entry is cost, you get to try it for free. If you never created an account, you get to try it for free. I can't think of a better reason to try something if it's free. Remember in the before times where you go to Costco and they had free samples and you would say, hey, even though I'm not a quiche person, I'm going to eat this little piece of quiche. Same thing. <laughs> Final Fantasy is the quiche. You're still the person. Uh, and as for the content creators trying out Final Fantasy 14. Cool. If you like it. Awesome. I, I hope you do. I, you know, and I know a lot of you can't change your, your content structure 
because you have employees. Some of you really do have like businesses that you grew around World of Warcraft. But I think you're if some of you are using it as a point of saying, how come they can do it, but we can't? And 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 really looking at what Blizzard's development style is and, and how come you know, and, and managing it. And I think it's cool. Uh, if you don't like it, that's also cool too. I'm not gonna, you know, you do, you do, you do, you. I what do, what do I know? <laughs> uh, and you, the person listening to this, if you're a WoW player and uh, you play WoW and you want to try Final Fantasy 14, I hope this video helped you in some sort of way. Uh, and if it didn't, I, you know, there's tons of other videos of people making this content, but. You know, I have I have nearly 17 years in playing World of Warcraft and eight years playing Final Fantasy 14. So I, I feel like if you're going to trust somebody, trust somebody that's put in the time in both games, not, you know, not somebody who's like, well, I just I just left. Wow. And this is why, you know, I don't I don't want to be that person. I wanted to really let you know from somebody who still pays for a wow sub <laughs> and pays for Final Fantasy 14 sub to tell you. Yo, both games are legit. Both games are good. You may like it. Give it a try. There's no money coming out of your pocket to try it. So that's what I got to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, we are trying to get to 100 subs here on this channel. If you can, just hit that subscribe button. boop a doop a boop That would be great. Uh, and if you like our content, stay, stick around. We're, we're our Final Fantasy 14 podcast here and, and video now video content creation here. Uh, so I hope I hope you like what we have to say here. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, drop down in, in the, the comments below. Are you a WoW player? And, and are you on the, the fence with final to play Final Fantasy 14? Um, you know, are, are you are you are you worried that your friends might think <laughs> like you're crazy if you go play it? Uh, and it, are you a Final Fantasy 14 player and, and you want to see people try out the game at least? Uh, let me know down below. Uh, you know, keep it friendly. Let's, let's no, no arguments down there. All right. Watching you. Uh, thank you all. And till C-Swall's all. Keep listening.